from history. Uh, welcome, history aficionados and connoisseurs of the curious, to another instalment where we dredge up the droll and dredge from the depths of days gone by. Today we're talking about a man whose life was so saturated with scandal and spiritual shenanigans that he could give any modern-day tabloid star a run for their rubles. Let's dive into the bizarrely bearded world of Grigory Rasputin, the mad monk with moves that mesmerized a monarchy. In the frostbitten fields of Siberia, 1869 dawned with a cry as young Grigory entered the world in the little village of Pokrovskoye. From peasant beginnings to palace prominence, this chap's life was anything but pedestrian. As a child, his odd antics left villagers whispering of wickedness and witchery. Was he touched by the divine or just touched in the head? History hints at both. Cupid's arrow struck a surprisingly standard chord in Rasputin's life when he wed Praskovia Dubrovina circa 1887. They played house and harvested humans, uh, had children, like good peasants do, but alas, infant mortality played the ruthless reaper in their rural romance. And little did Praskovia know that those personal plights would propel her hubby into holy hustling. One day, our bearded buddy up and bolts to the St. Nicholas Monastery in Verkaturie in 1897. This pilgrimage packed a punch, serving as the buffet for his soul's smorgasbord. Grigori got a godly glow-up, trading his plough for psalms and prophecies. He returned with eyes ablaze, a divine dreamer destined for... Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now, uh, Giraz did a 180 and embraced the hobo, excuse me, hermit, lifestyle. He tiptoed through Russia, taking the scenic route to sainthood. This saintly sojourn showed him the sacred sites and let him rub shoulders with religious renegades. Nothing like a good stint of soul-searching to set up a future saint or scoundrel, depending on whom you ask. As he sashayed through the motherland, Rasputin racked up rave reviews for being a medical maestro, a healer with the holy hookup. Miracles, check, healings, you betcha. Word of his wonder-working spread faster than a Siberian snowstorm, and soon every sick Sergei and ailing Anastasia wanted what Grigori got. Our wandering wizard waltzed into St. Petersburg around 1903, just in time for Tsarist tea and turmoil. With a charm as wild as his hair, Rasputin rose from a Siberian sideshow to a sought-after spiritual superstar amongst St. Petersburg's posh populace. Grigori, the godly guru, gathered a gaggle of groupies as he gallivanted through the glistening gates of society. His earthy eccentricities and murky mysticism magnetized the metropolitan muckety mucks. After all, nothing screams exclusive like a personal prophet who looks like he wrestles bears for breakfast. Love, hemophilia, and healings, the perfect recipe for Rasputin to rendezvous with the Romanovs. Tsar Nicholas and his Mrs. Alexandra were all a quiver over their haemophiliac heir, Alexei. Enter Rasputin, stage left, playing the role of the healing hero. With just a prayer and a pat, he reportedly turned terminal tantrums into tranquil tidings, and just like that, he snagged a season pass to the palace. Back at the palace, Grigori was the go-to guy for the ailing Alexia. His hands on healing had the Tsarevich topping the charts of Tsarist tranquility. The family fawned over their newfound fixer, fusing faith and favoritism into a frothy mix of imperial intrigue. By 1905, this Siberian soothsayer had secured a spot at court, and not just a spot, mind you, but a starring role. Uh, the Tsarina treated him as a trusted tenant of all things celestial, especially when Nicky was off playing with his armies. Rasputin relished his rise from rustic to regent whisperer. The Romanovs, ever so generous, gave the mystic a metropolitan manor right in St. Petersburg. This priestly pad was Rasputin's realm, a rendezvous point for the rich and restless, all seeking a slice of his sacred savoir faire. Never one for modesty, Rasputin roared about his royal rapport, ruffling feathers and rallying resentments among Russia's refined. His braggadocio became a banquet of gossip, gobbled up by the grumbling gentry as proof of pernicious palace puppeteering. Grasping for governmental gears, Grigori gambled with the Game of Thrones, 
demanding ministerial maneuvers that maddened the mighty, this spiritual sibling of Machiavelli meddled in matters of state, mashing up monarchy and mysticism in a manic melange. From 1915 to 1917, Russia's revolving door of dignitaries spun at a dizzying pace, thanks in no small part to our bearded busybody. The country's condition crumbled as cabinets came and went with Rasputin's whims. It's a wonder the door hinges held up at all. Propagandists painted Rasputin as the poster boy for the Romanov's ruin, a handy symbol of Habsburg hubris in an empire inching ever closer to insurrection. His name became synonymous with the shadowy sickness, they said, seeped through the sovereign state. The denouement of this divine drama dropped on December 30th, 1916, or December 17th, for those of you on the old-style calendar. A band of blue bloods led by Prince Felix Yusupov fancied themselves the final fix to the Rasputin riddle. They rolled out quite the sinister shindig to put an end to the mad monk's meddling. Post-poisoning pistol shots and a pugnacious pummeling, Rasputin was given the cold shoulder, and by shoulder I mean his entire body, as he was plunged into the Neva's numbing embrace. The chap's chilling checkout was the buzz of the Berg and beyond. The riddance of Rasputin was a royal attempt at removing a reviled rule wrecker, but it was a bit like locking the barn door after the horse had bolted to Bolshevik pastures. Shortly after his soggy swan song, the February Revolution reared its head, and with it the Romanov regime rolled off into the annals of history. Well, my dearest devotees of the decidedly different, our tale twirls to a close. If your curiosity has been piqued or your funny bone tickled, do grace us with a gesture of goodwill, be it a like, a subscription, or a comment of your choicest words. Until next time, keep unearthing the uncanny and unraveling the unusual. <laughs>